Realist to realist. First off, man, I want to say sincerely, man, peace, halito, well met to everyone who, who may view this video, man. Know that I'm dropping this video sincerely because I'm sick of the slander. I'm sick of people dropping facts that aren't true. Today, I want to take a look into the absurd claim that masonry in and of itself is in any way related to Western Freemasonry. A lot of people who consider themselves scholars, researchers, or maybe even teachers among various groups of our people, be they Indians or Aboriginals or Indigenous or whatever else a man chooses to call himself, have erroneously spoken false teachings and spread misinformation about me being a Freemason. I consider that a direct assault against my character and my family name, which I hold up high above all things. They're going to hate me or love me for my information, but like isn't, there's no room for like. Society paints their pictures, right? 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 Created a whole concept called black and white. Eugenics in the globe is how we live it, right? The caste system, modern day in plain sight. Do diligence, do diligence, do diligence, fuck that. I'm John Dillinger, I lay a pig with his cuss flat. Behind his sentence, I know I will receive much flat. But I'm the type of dude, if I said it, I meant that. Build a wall, build a bridge. I'm building with tough cats. Never building in the bird like a general with a tough hat. They're gonna hate me or love me for my information, but like isn't, there's no room for like. They got a lot of their knowledge passed down from us, the customs, their way of life and everything because they're only an immigrant, just like the European. What's up everyone, it's Indigenous Realist Realist. Today I'm bringing part two of my video, Native Indian Freemasonry Proof of the Red Sellouts. Check it out, it should be watched in concordance with this video. Before or after wouldn't change the message. As in video one, I will be reading a few excerpts from an article wrote by 33rd Degree Freemason who goes by the name of Frederick L. Milligan. He speaks on a well-known ceremony that was mentioned briefly in part one that will be discussed more closely in this video. Before we start this lesson, I want to state that I would like for everyone to subscribe and check out my other content. Hit the bell button so you won't miss our live streams that I have weekly. This isn't a conspiracy theory channel. This is a channel based on the study of allegorical data hidden in plain sight. Allegory is used so one can learn the ancients and know thyself by the ancients among the aboriginals and indigenous. By western freemasons it is used to conceal their true alliances in bloody past. A mason is born from the womb of his mother. A freemason is made inside a lodge under oath. One is natural, one is not. These two concepts are widely confused with each other. A simple way of remembering them is by knowing that Freemasonry is for free white men by free white men. Their main goal is to divide the people and hide their true identity from them and keep the minority ruling over the majority. A mission they set out to do before arriving on this land, which I also talk about in my Christopher Columbus video. Check that out. We think of Freemasonry as old or ancient or accepted as their own scholars depicted, which in turn gives the pale-faced European supremacy in a way over us in the field of knowledge and scholarship. There is nothing ancient about Freemasonry. With that being said, here's an excerpt from the article entitled Legends of the Ancient Guards of the Mystic Potents, also known as Little Waters. And the ceremony was held in the Long House of the Iroquois, that is the Seneca, Cayuga, Onondaga, Oninda, and Mohawk. Here, due to space and time, we will cover just the high points of the ceremony. The proceedings began with four raps at the door. I gotta pause right there. In modern Freemasonry, it always begins with three raps at the door. You can ask any Freemason that. But anyway, let me continue. The candidate was brought in and listened to the story of the Red Hand, the ancient leader. As in Hiramic, Legend, the candidate assumes the identity of the object of the story. Red Hand was a young chief who received certain mysterious knowledge from the creator of all. He was kind and generous and loved by all. One day in battle, a poison arrow failed him. The enemy Indian rushed upon him demanding the secret of his power, his life. Red Hand refused to divulge the secret, so he was scalped. 
a lone wolf came upon the body and howled so loud he brought all the animals from the forest. They each contributed a part of their bodies and revived the scalp which, had, which they put on Red Hand's head. They formed a circle around him as signs of life and chanting. Red Hand listened with his eyes closed when a voice asked him these questions. I want to pause right there before I read the questions and let my viewers know that symbols, signs, grips, words, and questions are the only true way for any truly ancient mystery system to be based off. Every ancient mystery system that's ever existed uses these in, the, in concordance with allegory and parables to raise a pure individual to a higher state of knowledge by way of a living perpendicular. This can be seen all through the ancient Yucatan, the birthplace of this plane of ancient and Freemasonry, and all throughout every other part of the Americas and all other ancient lands who came after with civilization. The questions read as follow. Hast thou cleaned thyself from human guilt and impurity? I have. Has thou ill will toward any of thy fellow creatures? I have not. Wilt thou trust and obey us, keeping thyself always chaste and valorous? I will. Wilt thou hold this power with which we endow thee for thine own chosen company alone? I will. Wilt thou endure death? or torture in its cause, I will. Wilt thou vow this secret never to be revealed save at death hour? I will. The death hour will be revealed to thee. Thou will be allowed to choose thy successor and at the end of thy journey thou will be rewarded for faith and obedience. The circle drew closer and the brother who is the bear touched the breast of red hand and, and all stood erect. The bear grasped the hand of the leader who was to be raised and by a strong grip pulled Red Hand to his feet. See, this may be part two to my other video on um, Native Indian Freemasonry, but this is also part one on a little sub-series looking further into the, uh, the ceremony of the waters. By the way, check out my scalping season origins on my channel also. That video has origins within Little Water. So that should be used in concordance with the next video I come out talking about Little Water. I'm in uh, I am indigenous realist, the realist, the realist, the realist. Uh, I am indigenous realist, the realist, the realist, the realist. Uh, I am indigenous. Go, go. 50 on me. Not stacks talking about caliber. Ha! I'm the realist. I do this shit without a fucking manager. Whoa. These nigga feds, they got white boys over them, they handle it. Cop. Straight scammers, leeching out the community like scavengers. Kill em. I am in business, raised by the tribe, not villagers. I have no time for the villagers, still stay threat like diligent. Bang! You don't hear it, but you feel it, bro. I kill a beat like a scrimmage. I gang tea like a damage. Pull you too like a blemish. Can't let a dude stop my mission. Used to gang bang, kind of crib. Now I bring out for the children. Bang real hard for humanity of live me. These two phones, they be glitching. Key favorite coach was his image. Damn. Got a passion for knowledge, plus I'm glifted. Raised up high on my square, I'm uplifted. <laughs> Y'all ain't even hear me say glifted, right? <laughs> like, like hieroglyphed, like, like glifted. Like, you know, I put like lifted with glyphed. Y'all get that shit, you know what I'm saying? I'm indigenous realist to motherfucking realist and I'm gone.